the former heavyweight champion of the world, Mike yeah. Tyson. The Undisputed Truth, Wednesday yeah. night. Yeah. After all this time, what made you want to take your one-man show on tour? Um, people asked for the show. People that seen the show and heard about the show and heard the reviews, they asked for the show. And um, it was so odd that this place asked, and it was the first stop, and I was saying, wow, this is going to be interesting. And at first I was a little nervous, but then I looked at this. I said, this would be give me a chance to make amends. So I came down here. I'm going to have dinner with my lawyer today. I, I just left um, Indiana um, prison to talk to my former ward, and I used to talk to people. And that was more um, therapeutic than just being on stage, just talking to him, making amends, look, him looking at me, seeing I'm doing well, I'm not being a fool, talking crazy in public, and I'm conducting myself as a gentleman. And um, I was happy for that alone. That I'm just happy that he's seen that I'm trying to do better with my life. And that means a lot for me and from him. When he told me, because he seen me at my worst, for him to see me now, and I'm, and he said he gave me a good um, recommendation of approval. I felt good. Man, I know other people say, who the hell cares what your ex warden say about you? I do, because he saw me at a, a very lower form than I was now, and so that it meant a lot for him to see me doing well. Do you kind of understand that? Yeah. All right. And he was happy to see you too. Oh, he was happy. He was crying just like I was. We were very happy. Who nicknamed you Kid Dynamite? Can you tell me about that? I kid? don't know. It's really? Issue, um, Sports Illustrated. Baddest man on the planet. What, Let, what was that feeling like? I don't know. Listen, this is what happened. My friend Brian, my, my, um, my name said, yo, man, Lala Zato's crazy. He said nobody on this planet could kick my ass. And you know what? This guy is crazy. So I had him frightened and intimidated. And I said, wow, if Brian was a little shook by that I said, I'm gonna try saying that and I said nobody on the planet can kick my and then they start saying the baddest man on the planet you were 37 and no and you lost your first professional bout to Buster Douglas yes and you were on top of the world at the time Get, what would you take from the loss I took that was the best fight I ever had because you have to you know what I mean you have to deal with adversity anybody can kick butt I have a little son he's two years old he can kick butt but what's gonna happen when somebody start punching back and kick his butt he's gonna cry and call mommy and dad is he gonna punch back and take his beating like a man and that's just basically what it's all about life in general because um eventually um no one gets out of here free we're gonna all experience some pain before we leave this planet and how we conduct ourselves and how we handle it is gonna um, judge whether we're gonna leave sooner or earlier Mike Tyson, the guest on the Dan Dockett Show. These are a couple of my pictures Whoa, when I was amateur boxing. Check this can, can you take me back to the day when you were doing that? Oh, man. Um, can I tell you something? I'd love to hear it. Um, that was my first Golden Glove win. It was um, the biggest moment. That I, never, I, dream, I think about those moments now. My biggest fights and my biggest glorious moments were in the amateurs more so than the pros. It's some glorious moments. Glorious moments. And my glorious moments, my, my, my best moments, um, this is really crazy because some fights I lost, but I tried so hard and gave it my best. You know, those are my best fights. Even though I lost, I gave my best, and the crowd just, um, they never stopped clapping. They clapped during the fight. And I, just, um, I didn't feel like I lost during those fights. Fights like that, I didn't think I lost because I gave my best. And the crowd was very pleased with the performance. Even though I lost, so I was just very happy they were happy. That's how it goes, as the child Cuss said, you have to make the people want to see you again. And he used to always tell me, I'm going to be waiting by the phone. There's people, friends of mine that be there. I want them to be ratting and raving when they call me. That's what he sent me out. Every time I went out to fight, I'm going to be by the phone. And some friends of mine that be there. And when they call me, when that phone rings, I want them to be ranting and raving about you. And that's what he tell me after every fight. The truest moment when you get in that ring, you know that you either worked or you didn't. Is that... You oh, you know, way? you know, you know what you did and what you didn't right. do. But then again, your mind plays tricks on you. It's our worst enemy. And sometimes when you don't train, your mind says, you could beat him without training. You're a god. Or something ridiculous like that that you want to hear. But um, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> the, the legendary Tupac Shakur, he wrote a song in your support, Lie to Kick It. Mm -hmm. what, did, what did your relationship mean to you with Pac? Hey, um, he was an amazing young man. Um, and this is something that's so ironic, like especially when I'm in Europe and in the Euro Western European, you know, um, the Balkans, that's all they say. Uh, some of the African nation, Congo, they say, you knew Tupac, what was he like? 
what did he say? How did he talk to you? What did you and him say together when you were together? And I'm like, well, and that's the most, that's the, um, the that's the, um, the biggest question I get asked when I'm overseas. What was Tupac like? Everybody, thousands of people. Listen, it may be hundreds, but it seems like thousands. You know, when we see hundred people, you really, really count to a hundred, one, two. So right. they seem like a thousand. Right. <laughs> so um, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people really had highly respect for him. Highly respect. I'm talking about kids that been like um, prisoners of war, guys have been captured from war in Africa and had to fight against other troops and stuff. They play top Tupac music while they're going, um, you know, they're going on some surge in some other town or some other village or something. This mm -hmm. is just um, the influence that he has on that side of the world. He's very influential. Guy that he has no idea. He had no idea how influential he was. Post boxing. The struggle, people of the struggle. Post boxing. Post boxing, like right now. How do you? Handle your aggression. You work out, like you know, what's on the Mike Tyson playlist on the iPod? Um, everything. Um, everything from Bob Dylan to James Brown, Sh Shania Twain, and because my wife puts this sh crap on my, my wife puts this crap on my iPod, so I got everybody. You know? Yeah. I got Celine Dion. I got Sh Shania Twain. I got who? Bob Dylan. Who else do I got on this that I never listened to? Maybe a little Tupac? Well, I got Tupac. Yeah. I got everybody, but yeah. my wife listens to everything. You got everything. Brenda Russell, who is it's everything. You know, Madonna, everything. That's just that's on my iPod. Every goddamn thing. <laughs> do you do you get as nervous in front of this crowd, in front of the, the stage crowd, like you did? Yeah, ab right? absolutely. But the only difference, I don't have to go to the hospital every You're night. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The Law and Order episode, it was a, you know, a complete switch from the hangover, for, you know, comedy to serious drama. Was that something you really had to work yourself up to it to embrace or this, you know, to embrace a new acting challenge? Hey, um That's good. Um but I, those are, I played because um I'm experienced. I want to be an experience. So I play these roles. But what I like to do, I like the stage. This is what I like to do. I like to be on the stage. Mm -hmm. I like, and if I do, I like to play um, comic roles and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that's been so um, pervasive of what I've been in my life is the tough, tough guy. I, I stay away from that guy. You know, when I go on and laugh, I like to laugh a lot and stuff. And my kids like comedy because they, like, um, right. they like to see me laugh. I have a daughter that's an actress. Um, she acts in a, her school, and um, she wants to act. So I always try to make sure that I do happy roles for her. You know, the people influence you by influenced by television, and they get sad and mad. And they, I don't want my daughter to be involved with that. I just want to do happy things. You said in an uh, interview with one of the local TV stations, Scott Swan from WTHR, he came out so to your cool. house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he said you were gonna sell your memorabilia. Is that like a closure thing to you? Absolutely. You, you, feel, you feel that, right? Yes. My wife doesn't understand that yet. You know, everything she. This is beautiful. That's not, baby. That's not what it is. That made me a guy that. I strive so hard to be a guy I didn't want to be to get this stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, I never thought about it. I strive so hard in my life to be somebody I didn't want to be to accomplish these goals, you know? And I never understood that, you know? Because I couldn't become successful just being Mike Tyson, tough, strong, young black kid from Brownsville, Brooklyn. No, that's not enough. I have to look at myself greater than I ever could imagine myself in order to accomplish what I accomplished. Mike Tyson from Brown's a big, tough black guy. He ain't gonna do it. He ain't gonna do this stuff, you know? He had to be a disciplined fighter to do this, you know? I, I just have to say this. I, I mean, I grew up watching you as a kid. We rented all the fights. I mean, this was an absolute honor for me to do. And I, I can't tell you how nervous I was. No, I haven't been this nervous since the first time I stepped in the ring as an, an amateur. Isn't that incredible feeling? That's an incredible feeling. Listen, um, I respect anybody. I don't care if he's been knocked out 99. But anybody that tries real hard that goes into this thing, there's so much men. There's so many um um food into oh there's so many idiosyncrasies that that's going on. It's more than just throwing a punch. So much is going on in here. This is where the fight is won and lost right here. The guy is always bigger, stronger, everything than you, and um somehow you win. And that's what fighting is a metaphor of life. Even though um, we 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 gonna lose, we know we gonna lose, but still you have to fight. Even though you know you're gonna lose, isn't that a crazy feeling? And that's is. what this life, this world put upon us. Even though we know we gonna lose, we have to fight in order to get respect. Mm -hmm. I've, this is how this guys fight back, and guys see him get the shit out of him. People jump in and start fighting back. But if he never fights back and let the guy just beat him, you know nobody won't jump in. You know that's why I realized if you help yourself, people will help you. Right. 
That's just what I figured in life. I don't care black, white, anywhere. If people see you fighting, they will help you. Even if you're getting slaughtered, not that. Let's get them. You know, anybody. I don't care what. Cause that's just the, that's just the fucking psyche of people. Right. You know what I mean? Seeing somebody that know he can't defend himself and somebody's taking advantage of him. That's just the psyche. I don't care what nationality. What that's just what people are. That's just true people. That's just what they do. Fight somebody that's gonna fight back. Right. Maybe I'm getting too deep in this. No, it's. <laughs> I'm thinking about I, cuss. That's how cuss I love Fight back. To you. Punch him. Hit him back, Mike. That's the truth. People yeah. pick up, people pick on the weak. Yeah. And that's it shouldn't be that way. They don't they don't they're scared to pick on somebody who See, does cuss fight is back. Strange. That's cuz I was weak. You is know, that how you started? You know, you kind of, but cuz um I don't know. No one can make this cuss is the only one that can do that. Nobody Angelo does. I don't care none of these big men. No one could pierce my soul to make me that guy. The one that just hurt somebody, just killed them for them. You know what I mean? It wasn't for money cuz cuss helped me in so many ways. I wanted to do it for him. What the money? Right. I wanted to make Cuss happy. I wanted him to give him another heavyweight champion. That's what he want. They stole his money and, they, and he was in exile. So I said, hey, I'll never laugh about laugh, laugh about you again. You watch. He, he used to say, you're small. He said, you wait, Cuss. The world's going to be scared of me. That's a great story. Mate, Mr. Mike Tyson, thank you so much. Mm. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank honor. you. Thank you.